Hey everyone, it's Ruth Zeger, the Executive Director of the Chagrin Falls Historical Society, and I am here today with another Mystery Monday. So, in today's mystery, this is the story of Joseph Wolfram, and it involves check forgery and a crossing at the Mexican border. Da, da, da. So, uh, this came to us uh, from uh, the website. Someone inquired into a ancestor of theirs, which they were never allowed to talk about. Hello? Cool. So we get this inquiry on our board president and trustee researcher, John Borso, uh, starts research through the exponents, through Ancestry.com, and through the county site uh, to see who Joseph Wolfram was and why was his descendants not allowed to talk about him. Uh, it turns out that he was a mayor of Chagrin Falls. Uh, he won the election in 1925. He did not uh, go through a re-election. Um, he instead went on to the school board, which had lost that one. Um, but he was a mayor at one point. Uh, by 1928, uh, John found ads for his insurance ag agency in the exponent. So we know he was an insurance agent after he was mayor. And then John comes across um, a very strange ad. Uh, it was from uh, Mr. Kent. And he um, said that from now on, he was going to be taking over all of Joseph Wolfram's cases. And that was it. So we knew we found the issue but we needed to know what happened. So, you know, we go to the census, uh, which usually, you know, would tell you a little bit about where the person is. John found him at a group home in Cleveland in 1930, and then he found him in a group home um, in the 1940 census down in Dayton, uh, actually with the Salvation Army. So then John finds an article in The Exponent in 1929 that says he's been spotted in the east. At this point, this is where the trail stops. Um, John keeps searching later on. Uh, he finds a plain dealer article um, about a detective going to this man's house the day after he disappeared, saying that they will chase him all over the country and they will warn 5,000 cities about him. So what did he do? So as John later finds out, he was involved in check forgery, and that is why the county sheriff was coming to his house. So the plain dealer reported that he was seen at a bus station, and he gave the clerk $20 bills, receiving $2 in change. So where was this money taking him? Well, on Ancestry.com, John found a uh, border crossing in Arizona, and the card states that Wolfram is traveling without a visa and there's no relatives in Mexico. His language is English. He is five foot seven, brown hair, brown eyes. He's 46 years old, and the card states that he was born in Bohemia. Our Joseph Wolfram was not born in Bohemia, but you wanna know who was? His dad. So we have come to the conclusion that this was our Joseph Wolfram and he was using his father's birthplace as a way to get across Mexico. We have no idea, you know, what he did in Mexico, where he went in Mexico or anything about that. Uh, we just know that he returned to Ohio. Um, like we said, you know, John found him in the 1930 and 1940 census. Um, in 1949, he got married and both him and his wife worked for the State Department of Taxation. I mean, don't they do background checks? Um... <laughs> Uh, by 1959, he is listed as an attorney in Columbus, and then he dies uh, in February of 1967 at the age of 85. 
So John relayed all of this to, um, to Wolfram's granddaughter, um, who was the one inquiring about him. And that makes sense why they were not allowed to talk about him when they were growing up. But you'll never know what you'll find when you investigate history and you start asking questions um, about anything you have questions about. So um, feel free to go, you know, if you have some questions about history, questions you're interested in knowing about with your family, with your house, um, please feel free to go onto our new website, sugarandhistory.org, same address, different look. Um, although I'm still playing with it, so don't um, uh, critique it too hard. But um, yeah, you can go on here, you can email us uh, your questions and we can research and try to find out the answer for you. And maybe it'll lead to something cool like a border crossing without a visa. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for joining me here today. And next week, I'll take you on a little field trip. Bye.